home stretch. Let's do it. We have got our six single crochet up here on the top of the skull. We've tapered inwards. And in our next row, we're just going to put two single crochet in the middle of this row. It's this little bit here. Okay, so we're going to granny along, chain five, put two single crochet in the middle, chain five, and granny along again. Really, really simple. Now, let me find my loop. Let's chain three. One, two, three, turn your work, and go. And for those of you who've noticed that I've switched from a, a charcoal example to a pink example, um, it's because I've been writing up the pattern today and I have started to follow the written pattern as I'm writing it to test it as I go and make sure it's accurate. And this pink one is the one I've worked from my written pattern. So check the comments. I will have a link there to the written pattern for anyone who would like to follow along. It has a ton of photos. It has um, a section where the directions are kind of summarized with just a couple of key photos. And then it has a very, very detailed photographic section with like nearly a photo for every step that you're going to complete. Okay, so we're just clustering our way along. Very boring, very simple. Watching out for the center section. And when we get to the center, we've got a little bit of chaining to do. Granny wedgies for life. Whoops. So close. Two. Three. All right. That was the last cluster. Remember our pattern? We put another cluster here on the chain space of the previous row. So yarn over. Make your little cluster there. Don't forget to keep your tension so that you don't get a baggy cluster. Nothing worse. And then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Look for the center two. So we skip the first two and then we do two single crochet in the middle of that group of six. Just gives our skull a really nice shape. There we go. And then we chain five again. Two, three, four, five, yarn over, and we tuck another cluster into this space, the chain space of the previous row. Okay, and now, as per usual, we just granny wedgie our way across to the end of the row. And you can see that I'm just following this bit. So if you happen to download the print version, it will have photos of this pink example. It's still cotton. It's still worked on a 4.5 millimeter hook. And it includes the maths for whether you'd like to make your scarf narrower or wider. It talks about using multiples of six to ensure that you have a center cluster to plan everything around and your motif doesn't end up skew with. Also talks about placing rows between your motifs for different spacing and textures. Nearly there. Whoops. Last one. And then I'm going to place my last double crochet into the top of my chain three over here. Oops. One, two, ta-da! All right, so we've done that row with its little top of the skull, five chain. And when you compare up here, you can see that in the next row, we're going to granny our way all the way across and we're only going to put one chain between these two. So when I get to my five chain space, I go granny cluster, one chain, granny cluster, keep going. And look, if you want, you don't have to put that chain there. I just found that my work sits better 
with that little bit of spacing. Okay, chain three and turn, and we're going to DC into the first stitch, do my dodgy half cluster there, and then cluster along, oops, without splitting the cotton. This is also a good spot to fact check. <laughs> you check that you have the same number of clusters in the beginning and the end of your motif. Because if you've grown an extra cluster somewhere along the way, you probably want to know about that. You know, just so you only have to strip back one row instead of 13 rows, because that kind of sucks. Speaking as one who's done it quite a lot. I'm getting so close to the middle, so close. Whoops. Okay, I can see that chain. So, put another cluster in here, close off the diamond shape. One, two, three. I like to put one chain in so that my work sits nicely. If you look, crochet loosely, you may not want that extra chain. If you crochet tightly, you may even want to put two chains there, okay? Don't be too scared. Nothing will happen. Nothing bad will happen with one extra chain. And then just yarn over and put your cluster in over here on your other chain five. And then I will show you that you've pretty much created a solid row and you can relax and have some rows of just solid granny wedgies. Okay, there we go. We've brought our wedges back together. So in the next row that we work across, we pretend that chain one space isn't even there and we just stick a wedge in it like always. See, no dramas, nothing extra, nothing fancy. Your brain can just go on holiday now and work a couple rows of Granny wedges. Oh, now I did promise, I'm sure I said something about marking that center wedgie, which I haven't got, that's the next row. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. I will work one more row with you and we're going to mark that center wedgie so that you know that's where you start your next motif. You've got the center already marked and you can either just look in a straight line up your scarf if you do, you know, 24 rows before you start your next motif. Or you can just look up a little bit if you're like me and you do four solid rows before your next motif begins. Totally up to you. And just a word about edging as well. If you've done the same type of um, edging as I have, working into the top of your chain threes, you should have a pretty straight edge happening on your scarf. If you haven't, if you've always worked into the gap and you've always done two DC into that space there instead of one in the space and one in the chain, you may find your edge is a little bit wobbly. And when that happens, it can be good just to do a row of single crochet around the perimeter of your scarf. So if that's something you think you would like to do, make sure you leave extra yarn at the end of your project. Um, a rough guide, I try and leave myself like, I think it's 10 times the length that I want to cover just so that I'm not playing yarn chicken at the end and stressed about running out. I think mathematically it's something like six or eight times the length you need, but you know, play it safe, go for 10. All right, I'm gonna do our last row now. Last row where I hold your hand. And when we do it, we're going to stop and put a stitch marker around the middle wedge because that lines up with this guy here. And that's how you're going to get your bearings to your next motif. One, two, three, and turn your work. All right, here we go. I'm also going to stop and count this once I finish it and make sure I have the same number of wedges because if I have shrunk or grown by accident anywhere along the way, I'd rather find out about it before I start another motif than 
once I'm halfway through the next one thinking, why does this look dodgy and weird? Two. Three. My brain doesn't let me count wedges as I go. I can like count my groups of DC, but <laughs> I just count one, two, three, one, two, three, over and over again. So I'll just work across and then do the numbers business when I finish. My husband and a friend of his are upstairs playing Shadows of Brimstone, which is a fantastic game, thanks a lot Kickstarter, um, with many, many expansions, which are taking over our house, millions of miniatures that need to be painted, and so many cards and so many dice. It is just crazy. It's a very, very involved community of players. And uh, I hear that many people who have invested in this game have sold all their other board games and said, this is the only game I ever need for the rest of my life. To me, that sounds a little bit extreme, but, you know, I've pretty much done the same thing with crochet, right? I have all these other crafts, but this is the only one I really need. All the fibre, all the hooks, all the patterns. And really, there's so many patterns out there, so many great creators and pattern makers and dyers and spinners and weavers. It's just a rabbit hole that keeps on growing. Okay, so while I've been muttering on, I have meandered across this row. I have completed all of my clusters. No, I haven't. I'm lying. I'm really close, though. I'm nearly there. Ready, steady, last one, and one DC in the final chain three. Try not to split the cotton. There we go. Just going to pull that out so I don't destroy it. Okay, one complete motif. Check it out. How cool is that? I've got twin skulls. One, two. So, like I said, Grab a stitch marker, or a piece of cotton, whatever you like, and whack it around that middle cluster right now, and then you don't have to count. You can choose now to do one more row and start the motif again, or three more rows and start the motif again, um, but you're always going to think of doing an even number of solid rows. So you think this is my first solid row of just granny clusters, I will do an even number of granny cluster rows and then you will hit this guy where you put your chain in to make that big open space and frame your motif. Okay, so this here matches up. I promised counting. I promised fact checking. Let's check it out. I'm just going to count my bottom row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is the middle. Thank goodness for that. Come up here and try the same operation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is the middle. Whoops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is the middle. So, um, thank you for joining me for this. If you would like the written pattern, please have a look in the comments and go check that out. And I would love to hear any feedback you have about making your own Grinding skull. Enjoy.